<laughs> so you finished quilting your quilt. It might be a good time to make a label for it. And if you're going to hang it on the wall or enter it in a quilt show, we're going to probably want to put a sleeve on it too. We're going to do both of those things today, but most importantly, I want to explore some of the hidden potential in the Vesta, some sewing features you might not know would apply to a quilt, and definitely in embroidery. Let's find some hidden stuff. I'm Kathy, and this is Sewing Tech Talk. So we have a giveaway for today's video. It's this great pack of embroidery thread. You're going to need that to stitch your label. So every time you like, share, and comment, you're entered for a chance to win. Let's talk first about putting a sleeve on the back because that really goes on just right after you're doing the, uh, when you're putting the binding on. So a sleeve is, is a piece of fabric that's on the top of the back of the quilt and you can put a rod through it uh, to hang it on the wall. If you're going to enter your quilt in a quilt show, follow the instructions. Many times you'll need a four inch sleeve because in a quilt show they use pipes to put the quilt to, to display the quilts. So check with the quilt show if you're going to enter one to see what size sleeve you need. My sleeve is going to be accommodated on this rod right here. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to put a rod together. You're going to need your own personal handyman for that. My darling husband does great quilt hangers, but I don't think he's making videos right now. So take a, take, decide how you're going to be hanging your quilt up. It could be a thinner rod than this, but you'll need something strong for a bigger quilt. Now, here's the issue that I find. This is a pretty big rod, right? So if I put my quilt sleeve on the back and I have this laying just like this, what's going to happen if my sleeve is flat and I put my rod in, it's going to bulge on the front. And that kind of takes away from the look of my quilt. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a little tuck or a little extra room in the back of my sleeve to accommodate the larger pole. Let me show you how I do that. So what I'm going to do is I take my fabric from my sleeve, I turn in the ends. Remember, it's going to be as wide as your quilt is, right? Now, I keep it in just a little bit from the outside edge, and that accommodates some sort of a hanging, uh, where you hang your pole up on the wall. And it's, it kind of looks like the quilt's just flat of floating up there. So here it is. I've already sewn my binding before I've turned it to one side. Now remember, this could be on either side. This could be the binding to the front or the binding to the back. And I'm going to stitch that top, that sleeve, one edge, right in that seam allowance, right where the binding's going to be. When the binding comes around, it's going to absolutely cover that. No problems, right? Now, when it comes to that little tuck, what I like to do is I have the machine set up for a basting stitch right now. I want to base this down right along here, and I want this little uh, area here to be kind of half the diameter of my, of, my, of my large rod, right? So I'm going to put my fabric underneath here. It's going to accomplish two things. It's going to base this sleeve down for when I attach it down at the bottom, and it's going to create that little tuck for me. I'm using a basting stitch because the Baby Lock Vesta has one, and it's going to be super easy for me to take out later. I love to use the basting stitch because, because it kind of controls things, and it's a great feature of the machine. So let me base this on down. I want you to notice that the machine's going to take a stitch and then make multiple spaces in between the stitches. And then, of course, I have scissors to clip that thread at the very end. Now, let's see what I did. So I put my basting here, some big old stitches. Now, when I pull my quilt sleeve over to the side like this, I need to do the next step, which is to sew, sew this raw edge down, right? Well, if I can, I can just stitch directly through it. But on this quilt, that wouldn't look so good. How do I know? Well, here's the other side where I put my basting on, and I hope you can see that if I put stitching right along here, it's not really going the direction of my quilting. Now, if I quilted it with lines going this way, I could totally do that, but I can't on this quilt. So I had to come up with another method to stitch this in down that you don't see from the other side. 
but it also has to be sturdy, right? So I know that I can do a blind hem, which is basically a similar process, and the stitching doesn't show on the other side, and it's super sturdy. So what I need to do is I need to turn this under, and I need to stitch this in such a way so that it doesn't show to the other side. Let me show you a sample here. Here's my fabric that we're going to stitch a little practice blind hem on. And I have it folded it up. I have folded it up. And then what you do in a blind hem is you turn it this way. And you're going to stitch along here and it's going to swing over to the left. So I'm going to use this fabric to show you. Let's go to the screen of the machine. And then you can see how we set up the machine to do a blind hem stitch. Got it? Okay, now on this machine, it's under the second category of stitches. There's tons of built-in decorative stitches on this machine and lots of utility stitches too. So now when I'm at the screen, there was my basting stitch. I know I'm going to need to go to the second category. So by touching this, I'm going to go to the second category and I know that the very first stitch that comes up is my blind hem stitch. So when I touch this stitch, what it's going to do, it's going to stitch along and it's going to swing over to the left and just catch that edge. That sounds pretty good, right? So I'm going to pick that and I've noticed that the machine tells me that it wants me to use the R foot. So that's the one I'm going to use. So now that we've selected the stitch, now if I needed to adjust it, I could, couldn't I? I could come up here and I could say, you know, I'd like that stitch to be a little bit wider because a quilt's a little bit different than a blind hem. I could do that. But let me just show you what a blind hem looks like first. So that's okay. Now we're going to go back and we're going to put on our foot and I'm going to stitch you a blind hem on this little sample right over here. Now I'm going to be using bright red thread. So you're going to really see it if I make any mistakes. So be kind, okay? So now I have that stitch selected. I'm going to come over here, drop off the regular foot and put the R foot on. snapped it on. Now what the R foot has, it has a little guide right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride the edge. Now you remember how to fold it, right? Now I'm going to guide that edge right along there. And what it's going to do, it's when I first pull up the stitch, it's going to show me how far it's going to swing over to the left. And I can see it's going to catch that fabric fold just kiss that fabric fold. So that looks good. Now what you didn't see on the foot is there's a little bar in there that lets that fabric have a better tension for doing this. The foot does all the work. You don't even have to worry about it. You just have to remember to pick the right foot. So let's get it adjusted and let's go. So it's going to stitch along the side and then swing over to the left and catch that fold. Let's see how good I did. There it is coming along there. Now, in my sample, this is going to be the quilt and that's going to be my sleeve. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's see how good I did. Pretty good. I just caught it a couple different places. Now, in my quilt, I might want to make that a little bit deeper. I might want to make that swing a little bit farther to the left because remember, this is going to be thicker so I can do that. But let's see if I can do it on my quilt. Are you ready? I got the other side all ready to go because I knew you were coming. So there's my basting stitch. I've pulled my quilt off to the left and I've turned that edge under and I'm just going to put a pin coming in just like that. I hope you can see that. Can you? Now, I'm going to take my quilt and I'm going to fold it up just like this and put it in and that looks suspiciously like that blind hem, doesn't it? 
So now when I'm stitching, of course I would use matching thread, right? Of course when I'm stitching, I'm going to come right along in here. I'm going to use the guide that comes in on that R foot that comes with my machine. And I'm going to stitch along and it's going to swing over to the left. I'm going to remove the pin right before I get to it. <laughs> Let's see how I do. Let's check it out. So there's that stitching, there's the sleeve, there's the quilt. When I open it up, I can see the stitching right along in here. Now, if you're entering in a quilt show, maybe you wouldn't want to have the stitching there. I understand completely. In that case, you would be hand sewing it down. But you know, some people have issues hand sewing. Let's turn to the other side and see how I did. Oh my goodness. There's the basting and then there's where the stitching would be. Let me grab my little remover and let's see if I did okay. Oh my goodness, there's the little tiny, tiny little pinpricks. I think I did pretty good. Now if I'd used matching thread, let's go back to the sleeve, that wouldn't show off too bad. Now there might be other stitches on your machine that would mimic this. Maybe there's a stitch that has it coming straight over back like this and to the front. If I find any of those, I'm going to put that information in your handout. By the way, there is a handout that comes with all of my videos. Go to the description and it's usually highlighted in blue and you click on that and you can go find the handout. So if you've missed a step, if I've gone too far with all that sleeve information, you can check out the handout and then you can see. So I think you might see that using a blind hem is not something you think you'd ever use on the quilt, right? But maybe it is. So exploring the options in your machine, it's a great idea. Now, let's go to the embroidery part of the Vesta. I'm going to take off the sewing. I'm going to come back and finish my sleeve in a little bit. But I want to show you, I found some hidden areas in the, in the embroidery part that I think you might be interested in. So let me switch over to embroidery and then I want to show you how I'm doing a label for this quilt. And I think you might find some pretty fun secret information. I'll see you soon. So now it's time to make a label for our quilt. I really like labels on the quilt. I made quite a few quilts and if I hadn't taken pictures of some of them, well, I couldn't even remember them. So it's a good idea to take pictures of your quilts anyway, but say you're giving the quilt as a gift, it's a great way to put that little extra something message on there. And quite honestly, if you're not around to identify the quilt, how are they going to know? So whatever you put on your label, quite, I'm going to use, <laughs> I'm going to use embroidery, of course, but how you make your label, what you put on it, that's up to you. I like to put a message. I like to put a pretty little quilt design on there. I'm going to put my name and the date at least. A lot of people put in the city. Sometimes they'll put in an extra little message, maybe quilt care. Depends on you. You just think about how you want this quilt to be identified later on. That's that's what you should put on your quilt label. So we're going to do this in embroidery and I've gotten mine started and we're going to finish it a little bit but I want to show you how I got to where I got. So I'm going to go up to the screen of the machine and I'm going to show you because I discovered something else too. Now I'm going to recommend to you explore your machine because you find some pretty hidden things in areas you wouldn't think about. For example, we use the blind hem on the quilt sleeve, right? That's something you wouldn't think about. Let's go into embroidery and let me show you a kind of a fun secret place that I found. So here is my quilt label and I have You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine, which is what's stitched on the front of the quilt. I have my name and the date and I've always wanted to do this little tree, which is the seasons. But let me, I put this in the memory so no worries, I can come back and finish my design. Let me come on back. And let me show you how I did that, just part of it at least. So I want to put in You Are My Sunshine. So I use the exclusive script in the, in the Vesta. So let me go find that Y. 
Now, I have large, medium, and small. And I don't know if you've seen some of the other videos. Large is pretty large. So I'm going to touch this and change it off to the small. Now I want to get my lower cased. And I'm not going to put it all in. I just want to give you an idea of how I did it. O, U, U, U is different than V. Make sure you know that. R, U, U, O, 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 O. This one was the U, not the your, so I can go delete and take off that last letter. Let's find the space, and let's go back to the lower case, and I think you get the idea. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. A, R, E. Now, I can come back and I can do a return key and I can do multiple lines. So let's just do that real quick so that you can see the concept of that. S, U, I always want to go to that V, so you guys watch me and make sure I don't do that. S, H, I, N, E, sunshine, set. Now there is your I've forgotten my. Obviously, I can come back and add that. But there's you are my sunshine. Now, I can take these and I can move them wherever I want by touching it and moving it up on the screen. Now, one thing to remember when you're doing an embroidery is it, it's going to stitch in the order that you've brought it in. So I have you are my sunshine, and I'm going to do the rest of that. But I'm going to add in my design. So I'm going to touch add. Now, this is a fun time that you can come in and you can add all kinds of different designs that maybe you wouldn't have a chance to embroider. That might be kind of fun. Let's see. There's my tree that I had. So when I touch my tree and I hit set, then I can move my tree where I want. Now, I don't know if you remember in my label, I had my name over the top of the tree. So let's do that. Let's go add. Come on in here, and I think I used this font, which is kind of a nice one, and I'm going to put in my name, C. Oops, I went a little bit far. A, T, H, Y. There we go. Now, I could put my last name in, but I wanted to show you when I hit, oh, uh-oh. I didn't put it to large, medium, or small, did I? Well, let's see if I can fix that. So when I come in here, I can edit that. I can edit that uh, size that I chose. I can also choose a ray, and I can make it... Not, oh, I like that better than my original. So when I hit OK, I'm going to take it, bring it down over the top of my tree. Now I can play with it. I can blow it up and see if I really, 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 really like that. Yeah, maybe not. But let me show you my secret place that I found some cool stuff. I'm going to hit Add, and I'm going to go to my alphabet, and I'm going to go to not this page. Not I'm not going to go to Russian. I'm going to go to the Japanese characters. Now, no, I don't speak Japanese, but look what I found. When you come into here, there's all kinds of Japanese characters, but when I go in here to the alphabet, there's a different style of, uh, not the alphabet, the numbers. There's a different style of numbers. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to put in the year 2022, two, two, right? But I found something else different. I have vertical, because in Japanese they do characters up and down. I would have never found that if I wasn't looking in where I normally wouldn't stitch. So when I hit vertical and I hit set, look at how my numbers came in straight up and down. I would have had to done that by pulling in each letter individually. So it's a secret, not a secret place, it's someplace I just normally would never have gone. I took that, I put it on the top of my trunk, and I'm going to mess around with it, but anyway, it's another place where you can do some fun, interesting things. Explore your machine. Places you wouldn't normally go. I found some small designs in a previous video under, under buttonhole embellishments. I normally wouldn't go to the Japanese characters because, quite frankly, I don't know what they mean because I don't speak Japanese. But I found some other cool things that the machine can do. 
by poking around and exploring. So I'm going to pull up my design that I've already started stitching. I hope you can see that there's other stuff in other places. So let me go back. I'm going to retrieve that other design from the memory. Let's go back. Let's clear everything out. Bring that design back in from the memory of the machine. There it is. I'm going to hit set. Now, when I go to edit end, I want to show you one other thing as well. When I go into embroidery, I've already stitched some of the part of my design. So I'm just going to go down to the part that's just my name and the date. So when I go to plus and minus, I can go down full colors at a time. And when I hit OK, I can see where I'm exactly at. Oh, I have a lot more to go. See, there's 18 colors and I only want the last two. This tree had a lot of colors. Okay, let's see. There's my 2022. That's exactly what I want to stitch. Remember, it's going to stitch it in the order that you brought it in. So now I'm ready to do that. But there's one more thing I want to tell you about. So I'm going to be doing, now when I did my original design, I did some smaller numbers down in here. And I'm going to do them in a dark thread so it really shows out. Sometimes when I'm stitching letters, when they're small parts to the letters, instead of using a standard white embroidery bobbin, I use a black one. So let me show you what that looks like. You can get embroidery bobbins pre-wound, which means that you don't have to wind them. So this is class 15 pre-wound embroidery bobbins. Work great in your machine, super convenient. And because they're wound at the factory, they can get more thread on there. That means the bobbin's going to last a little bit longer. But you can also get them in a black, which is a darker color. And that means when you're doing that little tiny fine stuff, the little tiny fine lettering, then, then the bobbin can't accidentally pull up to the front. So if you're going to be doing small lettering and you're going to be doing it in a very dark color, I do recommend those bobbins. So now I'm going to finish up my embroidery and Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it to the back of my quilt. Now remember, there's another way that you can do a label. If you're putting your quilt together, you can embroider the backing of the quilt ahead of time before you layer the quilt. And that means that all of this is going to be on the backing of the quilt when you layer it. You just got to make sure you kind of get it straight when you're putting the backing on. So you can either make it, sew it on, or embroider it on the back. Either way, it's a great way to make sure your quilt, in the future, they know who did your quilt and basically who to blame for how beautiful it is. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed exploring the Vesta today with me. Just do some basic finish up work for, uh, for a quilt, a sleeve and a label. I think it's something that most quilts gonna need to have pretty simple to do. I'm going to shoot it on over to George. I'm basically going to finish up my, um, <laughs> finish up my label. I want to thank you for staying with me today. I hope you had a good time. Explore your machine. You never know what's hidden, what the hidden potential is. I'm going to send it off to George. Thank you so much for watching me today and take a look at that handout. I'll show you the finished results there. Thanks, Kathy. Once again, that was a great presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download Kathy's uh, guide on that incredible project. Um, now, every once in a while, a machine's introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value, and that's the Babylock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine, but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by 6, and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. And look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus, it removes the jump stitches, and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now, that's not all, though. 
For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99. But right now, it's on sale for $39.99 and we're including free shipping across the country as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I want to make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well, I don't have a lot of them but I want to make sure those who are contacting me, all you have to do is mention Kathy our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now.